Whether you're starting a digital transformation project or trying to publish data from a control system, electrical supply and equipment, a full service electrical distributor has automation products to achieve this objective. My name is Jeremy Oxendine. I am an information software specialist with electrical supply and equipment. I want to talk with you about one of the products we sell to allow your control system to communicate with a relational database. This product is called Transaction Manager and is developed by Rockwell Automation. The product has been around for well over 20 years and has been vetted in manufacturing applications. It allows bi-directional communications between a control system and a relational database via native connectivity with Oracle, SQL Server, or any ODBC compliant database. I will demonstrate the bi-directional capability between the Control Logics controller and a SQL Server database for today's product review. Without any further delay, let's proceed to the demonstration. So I briefly mentioned earlier that Transaction Manager can be used to get data from your control systems and put that data into a relational database. But let's dig a little deeper into that. Specifically, what Transaction Manager can do is it can pull data from, uh, from Rockwell sources. Uh, it has, because it is a Rockwell product, it has a native interface into Factory Talk Live data, which means it can connect to uh, Factory Talk Directory, uh, Factory Talk BUSE, um, the Factory Talk Live data server, and any OPC servers that are defined within that Factory Talk application. The other way it can get data in is through this straight up OPC server. So I could stand up a, for example, a Kepware uh, OPC server with connectivity to Siemens uh, controllers and then pull that data into Transaction Manager. So that is one side of Transaction Manager. There's actually three pieces to Transaction Manager and this will come out when I go through or come out a little bit uh, more in depth when I go through the uh, actual configuring it. But one way, again, or one side of that is actually what we call these control connectors. And then the other side of it is what we call the enterprise connectors. And what enterprise connectors are, they are the actual connection to the relational database. Uh, for example, an OLADB connection, we got ODBC connection, and then we got an Oracle OCI connection. Now with the ODBC connection, that basically opens up any type of relational databases. Uh, about every database has some type of uh, uh, OPC or ODBC software or, or interface to be able to communicate with it. The other thing we can do is it has the ability to build uh, custom COM plus uh, objects, if you will, to allow you to allow direct communications into your, your enterprise application. So you could build a custom application to where you could have Transaction Manager via the connected enterprise that you build send that data directly into your application and not through a database first. So that's another option you can do. The middle piece of all this is where you take the uh, control connector and if you, and one way of looking at it or the way I kind of look at it is map that data into the enterprise connector. And again, this all come out a lot uh, more whenever we uh, actually go through the demonstration of how to configure and set it up. Now, one thing I want to make sure that's really clear is that this product is bi-directional. What I mean by that is we can take data from the control connectors and push it into uh, these uh, this enterprise connectors, such as a relational database, or we can take that data from these enterprise connectors and push it down to the control connectors. So what does that mean? So uh, one example we see this used a lot is like in recipe management. So if you want your recipes to be centrally stored and managed from a, um, from a, from a uh, enterprise type system, those recipes could be put, for example, in a relational database and then via the uh, SCADA or HMI, you would go in, select which recipe you, you were wanting to run on that machine or that machine configuration and setup. That would uh, then trigger the database to send those values from the database table down to the controller. So it allows, so it, it's bi-directional, but that's just one example where that bi-directional capability really comes in handy. So that's kind of a very high level overview of Transaction Manager. So now let's take some time and dig in a little bit about how you would go about configuring it. 
Before we get started, let me go over exactly how I've got my lab set up. You will notice I got a Control Logics processor and on my in my lab environment and on the network I have a server which is running Transaction Manager and I have another server which is running the SQL Server database. So we are on the, I'm showing you this actual image from the Transaction Manager server which this is the Transaction Manager software and then from the uh, database server I have the database with uh, which has already been pre-configured with some store with a store procedure which we should uh, use a little later on and I've also got my uh, uh, database uh, table that uh, has some data in it but we're actually going to be writing uh, some more data into this table so as you can see I've got some data that's already in that table so that's already being configured the database has now from the controller uh, I basically there's nothing really going on there except for the fact that I have uh, some tags already defined within this uh, procedure this ESC demo procedure and we'll be using those to actually demonstrate the functionality of how transaction manager works. Okay, the first thing I like to do is before I start doing any configuration is to write down what it is I'm trying to accomplish. The first thing we're going to do during this demonstration is we are going to write data to the database. We're going to grab these tags out of the controller, float, FLT1, uh, STG, which is a string, uh, var1 which is a dent and we're going to place those into the relational database table fields of float1 for FLT1 and string1 will contain the STG value and var1 will contain the var1 value in the controller so that's what we're going to set out to accomplish Okay, so let's start configuring Transaction Manager. I've opened up Transaction Manager on the server, and first thing you'll notice here is the name of the server, and then we got this ESNE demo, which is actually a configuration I've already done, uh, and it actually does exactly the same thing we're going to be doing with our configuration. But for our purposes today, I'm going to go through the reconfiguration process so that you can you can see how it's done. So first off, you click on configuration, you tell it a new configuration, you need to give it a name, and I'm just going to call it TT for tips and tricks, and trans for transaction manager. Step one, you, uh, you've got to tell it where do you want to store it, so you need to give it a directory uh, location of where this is going to be stored. I want to enable online editing. I didn't mention this earlier, but with transaction manager, you can actually do online editing. Uh, the only caveat to that is it has to be... Um, factory talk live data if you're using a generic OPC connection you will not be able to use online editing with that I'm going to use just a standard ODBC connector I typically do that uh, probably 95% of the time so I'm just going to kind of stick with that format of just using a generic ODBC connector and I'm going to do apply of course it's going to ask tell me it succeeded and then step two is where I'm going to define the connectors now defining the connectors is where I go in and actually map to the data points that's in the controller. So we're going to start that process. Actually, let me back up. This is actually going through and defining all the connectors that I'm going to use with the passwords and things like that. So I'm kind of one step ahead there. I apologize for that. So it's asking me, because these things run as services, these different connectors run as services, we've got to go in and we've got to make sure that they have passwords to be able to kick those services off. So whatever user account you use, just make sure that it has the rights to be able to uh, uh, turn services on and off. Now, because I've already defined that I'm going to use the uh, live data connector and an ODBC connector, I just got to make sure again that it can use that I'm using given an account that can turn on those services. And with the ODBC connector, I've got to give it a name. So I'm going to just uh, call this one uh, ODBC underscore to SQL. Okay. And we're going to do apply on that. 
and we'll close that. So, and as I do these, you'll see these little check boxes come up. So step three, where I jumped ahead a few minutes ago, step three is actually where we define the data points. So this is defining the data points to the uh, PLC. So when I click on that, now you notice I, I come up and it says select an application because this is a factory taught um, application that we are uh, or we're going to be using uh, live data. It's asking me to, to give it the application that contains those live data servers. The reason I opened up administration console here is so you can see uh, that that's actually where that's being pulled from. So give this a second to uh, update and you'll see all my uh, applications that are defined in here. So you see I got ESNE demo, ESNE PowerShell, um, all these other applications and that's where Transaction Manager was actually pulling that data from to see it matches. So I know mine's in ESNE demo. So I'm, well, let's double check that. Let's just make sure that. So I'm going, the only thing I'm doing here is checking that data server to make sure this is the one that I actually should be using. I'm 90% sure that it is, but uh, yeah, it is. It is okay so I just wanted to make sure that before we went too far and had to backtrack so that is the application we need to be connecting to so I'm gonna tell it ESNE demo and it's going out there and it's browsing those tags now and this is where it helps that you make sure that you have that uh, what I pulled up earlier this kind of uh, map. Uh, give me a second here. I want to pull this back onto the screen. So this is where this is helpful if you have that map uh, so that we know what tags we're wanting to get a hold of and how we're going to bind them. So uh, that's why I said it's, it's important that we kind of lay that out first. So I'm going to browse down to the controller. We'll go to that uh, ESNE demo, and here are the tags. So you remember earlier I said one of them was a float tag. Uh, another one was a string tag. We'll get that in a minute. Another one was this var one tag, and then. There's the uh, string tag. So those are going to be the tags that we're going to log to the database, but we also have to have a trigger to tell it to actually do that logging. So I'm going to go back in here and we've got a couple bits. I've got a write bit and a read bit. We're going to be writing data to the database, so I'm going to double click this write bit. One thing I will want to draw your attention to here is the mode, right? So this is scheduled, scheduled, scheduled. If you're using something to trigger a transaction, you need to set that as a unscheduled mode. Okay, so kind of that's important. Don't forget that or it's not going to show up when you need it to. So I'm going to do an apply and I'm going to close that. So now I've got my tags defined from the controller. Now I'm going to go and make the database connection. So I'm going to do step four and this is where we need to give this a name and this is going to be ESE demo and at this point we've got to go in and set up a system DSN. Now I've already done this. This is just a standard Windows system DSN setup. So I'm going to give it that 
I'm going to give it my credentials and then I'm going to test that connection and it succeeded so what I just verified there was that I can actually connect to the database so that's basically all I did okay so system DSN was already pre I'd already gone through the process of configuring that if you need to know how to do that there's tons of YouTube videos out there on configuring uh, system DSNs so just look up one of those so now once that connection is made I get a list of all the tables that's in that uh, database that I can in that ESNE database so the one I'm going to want to write to if you remember let me go back over here and we're going to want to write to this ESNE test table right here that's the one we're going to communicate with or put our data into and these are the values that remember we were talking about we were going to put var a string and a float okay so that's what we're going to write error from the controller into the relational database that's where we're going to put it so we want to get that test table that's who we're looking for is to communicate with is this test table right here so now select the test table you see it pulls those records that you saw within that relational database uh, the record the var one string to float and take date and time stamp I'll go back over here and see again record var one string float date time stamp so it pulled those that information in so at this point what is it I'm going to try to bind to well I'm going to try to bind to the, that one I want to bind to that one and I want to bind to that one I've got this system set up so it will automatically generate when a records inserted the uh, record number and the date timestamp that's a function of the database the way the database was configured to do that so I don't have to write those records in so that steps complete now the final step is to actually marry the two together that third step so that we're going to go in to find a transaction and I'm going to call this the write uh, trans got to give it a name uh, database object ESE demo and you can see it, it grabbed those values this is what's in the database that I got to connect to I want to do this real time you can actually do a cached value and the manuals do a pretty good job explaining this but real time basically means when I hit that trigger I expect to be able to write into that table and it should be somewhat instantaneous if I do caching what that means is I'm gonna build up so many records before I flush the buffer off of this server out of transaction manager and right into the database a couple reasons you just want to do that one is storm forward capability in case you lose the connection to the uh, SQL server database it gives you that functionality a little bit of fault tolerance the other reason is uh, so you're not hammering the database constantly with uh, just one transaction after another we're in a demo environment so it's not that big of a deal and we want to see it we don't want to have to wait for me to trigger 100 times before data gets dump from the buffer into the database so we're going to go real time I'm also going to go ahead and do and enable this transaction now the other thing I got to do is I actually got to start doing binding so on this var1 I'm going to right click and I'm going to say bind to a data point okay so my bind to a data point is going to be uh, var1 I'm going to bind another data point which is going to be the string and I'm going to bind another data point which is going to be the float uh, and then I want to set up the trigger so how do I want this to trigger I can actually have it where it writes it on an interval but I want to do it based off unscheduled remember I told you you had to select that value in uh, one tag until it was unscheduled this is the reason we do it so it can actually show up in this list there's some other things you can do here you can do things like ignore the first unscheduled event typically I do that uh, you can actually send back completion status information to the program to the PLC program to let it know that it was able to write it we're not going to do any of that again the manuals do a pretty good job of explaining that but that's some, some things you can do to get verification that the record actually got written into the database and we're going to do a verify uh, it was successful it does give me some warning information here about how I've got things triggered and some things like that but I, I we're, it's basically informational no major issues here so I'm gonna do an apply uh, 
and I'm going to say close, and I'm going to say close. So we've got our transaction configured. So next will be to actually test this configuration. So let's go ahead and start this transaction. And the way I do this, I click highlight the transaction I want to run, click that little arrow, and that will start the, uh, the uh, configuration. So one thing I want to mention here is you can only run one configuration at a time. So that ESNE demo configuration that I'd written several days ago, I can't run it at the same time that I'm running the uh, transact or the configuration that we built today. So one transaction at one configuration at a time can run. So you notice it's up and running down. Nothing's getting written to the database. And if you remember uh, the way I developed this or configured it was when the right bit gets turned on write something to the database okay and as you can see the timestamps inside the database everything is from february the first the day we're on uh today is february the 12th so i've got no data in there from today so when i trigger this or write this change this write bit to a value of one it's going to write a value of 75.3 into the float a value of 45 into the bar and then the string is going to be changed to a blue so let's go ahead and do that and then we will execute it and we see that it's actually written the data into the database with today's date now again today's date is being generated by the database itself by the way the table was configured so we've demonstrated how transaction manager can be used to write data in the database based off of a trigger and again you could set it up to where it does it real time on a second interval or whatever but most of the time where we see transaction managers used is really event-based data logging. So it's based off something happening on the piece of equipment and using some type of a trigger bit to cause it to send that data to the relational database. So our next step will be to configure a read to pull data out of the database and send it back down to the controller. So now let's show how we can get data out of the database and send it to the PLC. So when you're pulling data out of a database uh, with Transaction Manager, it's actually pulled through a stored procedure. And the stored procedure is going to return three variables in our case. Um, actually, it's going to return two variables in our case. One of them is an at FLT and the other one is an at int. The at, F, the at FLT is a real data type and we're going to return that to a floats underscore zero inside the controller and that's a float data type and then we're going to return a, a, the variable at int which is an integer inside the database which is a d int inside the controller and it's going to go to var underscore zero the string value what we're actually doing is we're with the store procedure we are going to pass this string value from the controller into the stored procedure and that's how the stored procedure is going to know which uh, record to return out of that database so that's how we're going to kind of lay this out and, and the, the example is really uh, showing how we typically see this used with like a recipe uh, pulling uh, or machine setups pulling that from a central database as I mentioned earlier in the presentation and that's what this demonstration is going to be about so let's take a look at that so let's get started and show how we can read data from the database and send it down to the controller. The last demo we did, we actually wrote data from the controller into the database. So and that transaction or that configuration is still running. So let's stop that configuration so we can go ahead and make these edits. And typically, unless there's some reason uh, that I can't stop the transaction manager and make the changes, I typically stop it. Uh, it's probably just out of habit, but I just found it's uh, um, easier for me to do that. Uh, if, if it's still running and you make changes, it requires you to make a couple of double clicks on things, which I kind of found uh, to be annoying. So uh, I just stop it unless I, some reason that I can't. So with that being said, I'm going to go in here and let's go back to the checklist again. And I'll tell you what, let's, let's not do the checklist. Let me show you how I would do this if I was adding this to an existing configuration without using the checklist. So I'd go into the, uh, the controller, what they're calling the transaction controller manager, which is the part that connects to the PLC. 
and I'm going to go in there and I'm going to uh, connect to some data tags. One of them we're already connected to, and that's that string value. So we, we won't have to reconnect to that one. Uh, that's where, if you remember that um, sheet I pulled up just a few minutes ago, the string value is the value we're going to pass into the stored procedure. So we won't have to, uh, that one's already defined. The ones we are going to have to define are these uh, float values, the uh, float underscore zero, which is really, it's an array. It's what I've got configured there. So, and that's underneath float if I double click on that. So that's one of them. And the other one is this vars. And double click on that one. So that one's been added. And we've got to have a trigger to tell it to go and do that read from the, uh, from the database. And if you remember, uh, I've got a read bit here. Now, again, remember this. If we're going to use something as a trigger, we've got to define it as unscheduled. So I'm going to change that to unscheduled, and I'm just going to do an apply. I'm going to do a close. So now those tags have been defined, the ones I'm going to need. And before we go too much further, let me just show you the uh, store procedure that's in the uh, database that was built inside the database. open already so no, that's not it can't remember what I called things here so that's not it either so maybe it is this one maybe I need to read a little closer yeah this is it so this is, and even though I got it called uh, Kepware here, that really doesn't mean anything. Uh, th this demo that I'm running on actually shows both uh, are a different type of product that can do this. It's a Kepware product, which I'll be doing another video on uh, here in the coming few weeks. So uh, you come back and check that one out, but using the same stored procedure for both products. So this stored procedure, uh, when it's triggered, it is going to take a, it's going to int, the uh, at int is an output, the at dt is an output, and the at float is an output. And we're going to um, take in as an input this string. Now, if I don't pass it a value, it's going to take a default value of blue. And then I'm basically just going to do a select statement. So all this is really just database stuff. It's uh, SQL statements. Typically, these will probably be already built for you, and you'll just be connecting to them. But I just wanted to show you that so you'd see what we were actually connecting to on the database side. It's not a table. It's a stored procedure. And uh, so let's go ahead. We done the configure the tags. Let's go in here on the database side and define the, uh, the data object for this. Now, you remember, we have this one where we got the database connector and we called it ESE demo and we are uh, this was set up to read that data out now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to be uh, I'm going to give it a new name or I'm going to actually create a new one and I'm going to call this one ESE demo and we'll call it a uh, read so I'm going to run against the stored procedure and again this uh, database connection is a DSN, which is already defined. So there's the DSN. I'm going to look for stored procedures. And it come back and it found all these stored procedures. And if you remember, we, there are several of them in there. But the one we're running against is this one that's the test table stored procedure. And I'm just going to do that. And that's all the variables that we're going to be uh, connecting to. So I'm going to do an apply. Now, I've defined the data coming from the controller and I've defined the connection on the database side. So now let's go in and work on the uh, transaction. So I'm going to do define transaction and this is going to be a read trans and again we're going to, at this time with the data object is going to be an ESNE read or demo read. I'm going to enable it. Again I want to do real time and trigger I'm going to do unscheduled, and this time it's going to be a read bit, right? 
So I'm also probably tell it to ignore the first unscheduled event. And again, uh, again, I meant to bring this up that you've got all these things to tell you whether it completed successfully or not. So you can grab that type of information, feed it out to controller, so you'll know whether it actually carried out the uh, trigger. Just in case the database failed to do so, or you didn't have connectivity and you tried to trigger it, you'll get an indication of whether it was successful or not. So with that being said, we got that part done. Now, I'm going to bind to a data point. And for this one, I'm going to bind again to the string. I'm going to bind this data point to the var zero. Remember, that's the one we just added. I'm going to bind this data point to the uh, float zero. And I'm going to bind, I'm just going to bind to null, which basically just means I'm not binding that one to anything. And I'm going to do a verify. Got informational errors, which is basically a lot of times that's telling you about timing, something triggering faster than it could respond and all of that. But they're all informational, so I'm, I'm looking pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and do an apply. Do close. And then we're going to turn this on and see how it works. So let's do that, uh, do that next. So now we're ready to turn on Transaction Manager or turn on this uh, configuration. So make sure it's highlighted, the one we want to turn on. Hit the start. Give it a few seconds to start up that transaction or that configuration. Keep calling transaction. You can have multiple transactions in a configuration. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I've actually got two transactions defined within this configuration. So you want to start a configuration and then all the transactions which have been enabled will run uh, for that configuration. So let's go in and we can see that nothing's triggered yet. So I'm going to switch over to my uh, controller. And remember that read bit that I was talking about earlier, that if I trigger that, it will write into this var zero uh, floats zero. And what it's going to write in, write in there is based off of this string. So if we go and look at the table, we see orange, right? So that string is orange. So when it goes in and queries this table, it's going to do a selection looking for this, the record that has an orange value in string one. And then it's going to take the value of var one and load it into var zero and uh, a float one and put it into the float zero of the controller. So these should change based off what I just said. So let's uh, change that to a one. Sure enough, we can see that the orange, the var, should have went to 3, and it did. And the uh, floats should have went to 1.4. So let's change that value again. Let's change this to a 0. And let's say uh, we're going to run a, uh, like some blue crayons or something like that. So we're going to do apply. Say OK. And uh, trigger that read again. And we will see the values change correspondingly to... Uh, the data points. So that's how you set up a um, read from the database back to the controller. Thank you for your time today. I hope you have found this video demonstration helpful. If you have any further questions or need additional assistance, please do not hesitate to contact an electric supply and equipment representative.